What's going on, everybody? This is Primetime James Thomas going to another video. And today I want to talk about, finally talk about Beverly Hills Cop Axel F, which I think is a crazy title because I'm calling it Beverly Hills Cop Four. I don't understand this current trend of movies where they don't want to acknowledge the third or fourth films. You know, it, it like like they don't want to. They got add the title and it has some sort of subtext to it. You know, like Bad Boys instead of Bad Boys Three, it's Bad Boys for Life. Instead of Bad Boys Four, no, it's Bad Boys Ride or Die. Now with this, that Beverly Hills Cop Four is Beverly Hills Beverly Hills Cop. Axel F. Like, why? Why are we doing this? We know there's four films. Like, like, come on. Like, I don't, I don't understand the trend. It's annoying. It's annoying. It's annoying. But it's a nitpick. And um, and that's yes. And the movie came out last week, July third, the day before Fourth of July. Um, so the movie's still pretty fresh in everybody's minds. And I think by now, people have gotten uh. A good majority of people may have seen this film because everybody has Netflix. I'm assuming, so I'm gonna give. Um, I'm gonna talk about it. But before I do that, I just want to say that I'm not gonna review this film uh, beat for beat. I'm not gonna do that. I'm just gonna give you my overall observation of the film and what I thought about it. And um, and before I do that. I want to give you my overall thoughts on the Beverly Hills Cop franchise as a whole. Now, if you've been on this channel long enough, you would know that I am a huge Eddie Murphy fan. I'm a huge Eddie Murphy fan. Uh, I believe he's the greatest comedian of all time. Uh, I believe that when he's on, when he's motivated, and when he tries, he is still one of the funniest guys on the planet. And and I grew up on Eddie's films. To me, he's the GOAT. He's the absolute GOAT. Uh, he broke down barriers that will, will never be seen ever again. And anything that, anything that Eddie Murphy is in, I'm going to support, whether it's good or bad. I'm going to be there to support it. That doesn't mean I won't give my honest opinion about his work, but I'm going to support it because I support Eddie. And the Beverly Hills Cop franchise as a whole, keep in mind, Beverly Hills Cop came out in 1982, 83. And I grew up on the first three Beverly Hills Cop films. Uh, 83, um, Beverly Hills Cop 2, which came out in 87, and Beverly Hills Cop 3, which came out in 1990, 1993, 94, one of the two. And Beverly Hills Cop 1 is a classic. It's a classic film. It's the movie that really captivated Eddie Murphy into uh, not just a superstar, but a megastar, a rock star. Like, you got to understand, with Eddie Murphy in his prime, in his heyday, was a rock star. Like, everywhere Eddie went was massive. Eddie was one of the, was the biggest, one of the biggest stars walking on this planet. Like, you think Kevin Hart in his day was big? You think Martin Lawrence in his day was big? Nothing was like Eddie Murphy. Nothing was like Eddie Murphy. And Eddie Murphy was 22 years old. Keep, keep that in mind, folks. 22 years old once Beverly Hills Cop was released. And already at that young of an age, you saw the star power, you saw the it factor, the charisma, the presence, the aura that he had. He, he had it all. He had it all. And at a very young age showed how damn good that he was, and and Beverly Hills Cop One is a foundation of what made Eddie Murphy the legend that he is, and it's a great film. 
you know, you have you have Taggart, you know, you have you know Rosewood, you know, their and their relationship, how much Taggart couldn't fucking stand Axel, and then their friendship grew as the movie progressed. It was all how you know Eddie Murphy, the whole fish out of water story of him being a street cop from Detroit, heading to Beverly Hills and trying to navigate, you know, through Beverly Hills life and all that stuff, and how him using his quick wit, you know, how he would scam his way in and out to places. If you want to see Eddie Murphy at his, in his pure, raw form, Beverly Hills Cop is the movie to watch. Absolutely. And I love Beverly Hills Cop, one. You know, of course, the, the iconic Axel F theme. Come on. Everybody has heard that theme once or twice in their life. They had to. Um, then you get to Beverly Hills Cop uh, 2. Beverly Hills Cop 2, directed by Tony Scott, fresh out of Top Gun, 1987. And I really enjoy too. I really enjoy too. Eddie Murphy still in his A game, still on fire. I love the the sleek and stylish style that Tony Cop, Tony Scott uh, brought to the film. Um, and people don't like Beverly Hills Cop 2 for some strange reason. Like people just don't like it. I I I never really understood the hate that Beverly Hills Cop 2 has. I a lot of that movie is fire because the energy from Beverly Hills Cop 1 and 2 is organic, it's natural. You could believe that this is the same universe. I mean, come on, like that opening intro alone. You know, with the shakedown, breakdown, and you should see Eddie Murphy getting himself dressed, pointing the gun at him, pointing the gun, you know, laugh at himself. You know, you see the, you know, the, the stylish, the stylish look of the film was really was fire, was fire. And I never understood the dislike for Beverly Hills Cop 2. Beverly Hills Cop 1 and 2 is a great back to back film. Great back-to-back -back film. Films. I'm sorry. Then we get to Beverly Hills Cop 3. Now, I before I watched Beverly Hills Cop 4, I actually took the time to watch all three films back-to-back-to-back. -to -back -to -back. And Beverly Hills Cop 3 is very strange. It's weird watching it because it does not feel the energy that's in one and two is not in three at all. Now, if you watch Beverly Hills Cop 3 just on its own, in its own merits, it doesn't feel as weird, but I'm telling y'all. Watch Beverly Hills Cop 1, 2, and 3 in one setting. Or if you can't, because it's six hours. But if you just like watch Beverly Hills Cop one night, the next night two, the next night three, you can see how drastic the difference is. You feel it in the film. Where, like, keep in mind, folks, you got... Like, the very beginning of the film, Beverly Hills Cop 3, Beverly Hills Cop 2, the energy it has, you know, you know the song that plays, you know, and then you get to Beverly Hills Cop 3, where you just hear the sounds of the city of Detroit, and it just, and, 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 and it just says Detroit, and then it just pans down to Axel and his partner on a stakeout. Like, it feels like a drama. Like, it feels like a completely different film. We don't even get to see the title of Beverly Hills Cop till like the very end. And it was really weird because I remember reading that 1993 was a very weird time in Eddie's career because you could say that was when he was kind of like in his falling off stage of his career. Because keep in mind, folks, Eddie was on a hell of a run. A hell of a run where he had, for Beverly Hills Cop, you had, you know, coming to America, you had the golden child. 
But it was Harlem Nights. It was Harlem Nights, well, which was Eddie's first big loss. Because keep in mind, at that point, anything Eddie touched at that point was gold, right? Harlem Nights, which was a passion project for Eddie, you know, he wrote and directed the film. It was his first, it was his first loss. And it hurt Eddie. Like it legitimately hurt him. And you can kind of make cake make kind of make this, he never really kind of got over that. But you could say he started to have a little bit of a fall off. Yes, he had boomerang and this thing was gentlemen, which I think is very, very underrated, by the way. And Eddie at that point kind of want to be taken more serious as an actor, I think. Because one of the biggest problems with Beverly Hills Cop 3 is act Eddie Axel's not Axel in Beverly Hills Cop 3. He's not, he's not a smart ass, he's not quick witted, he's not, you know, that edgy street cop from Detroit. Because Eddie said that because I've heard John Landis saying that there were times when he noticed that Eddie's energy was off. And he was asking Eddie to kind of like ham it up a little bit. But Eddie's retort to that was, I'm not gonna do that because I think at this point, Axel will be mature. Axel wouldn't do this anymore. And because of that attitude Eddie brought, it did not feel like a Beverly Hills Cop film at all. There were moments, there were like flashes of Eddie being old Axel, but it was very non-existent. Very non-existent. You, it, it feels like completely different film and it doesn't feel like the concept of Beverly Hills Cop 3 sounds great with the whole you know Wonder World concept Wonder World Wonder World you know all that stuff but Eddie was just not feeling it and I really don't know what was going on in Eddie's life at that time but he was he dragged the film and of course the absence of John Ashton you know Taggart was a big loss as well. Rosewood, Judge Reinhold was still there, but Tagger wasn't there. You know, the energy was off. The Beverly Hills Cop 3 is just not, it's not good. <laughs> Let's just keep it real. It's not good. And we, and since then, we haven't had a Beverly Hills Cop movie since. Now there's been talks off and on over the years. Um, there was a, I think there was a, TV show uh, that they actually filmed the pilot for. I believe the guy that played um, uh, Al Pacino, uh, Brandon T. Jackson, was actually going to play Axel's son, and you know, and they actually filmed the pilot where Eddie was actually in the pilot, and then it was going to transition, transition into a movie, but then that got turned down, and. And and they were just going stop, start, stop, start pushes until they actually announced that they finally gonna do one. And Beverly Hills Cop Axel F was finally made. It's finally been released. And I gotta say about Beverly Hills Cop Axel F is I enjoyed it. I really enjoyed this. Now the biggest reason why I enjoyed this is because one Axel felt like Axel again. Eddie felt like like he was being Axel once again. And granted, keep in mind, folks, Eddie Murphy. Well, the actual character is 60 something years old. He's 60 something years old. Hell, realistically, he should be retired. There's no way he would still be a street cop in Detroit at this point in his life. But they address that in the film. They address it in the film why he's still out there because he loves it. It's all he knows, it's what he does. He loves being a cop. 
which I'm glad that they did. I'm glad that they actually addressed the fact that Axel is older now, that he can't be doing the same things anymore. I actually kind of like the fact that during one of Axel, because those classic Eddie you know, Axel moments when he tries to you know, scam his way into situations, that I kind of like the fact that in 2024, some people are being a little bit more skeptical of the bullshit that uh, Axel is uh, spewing out there. So much so that his daughter had to get him out, had to save him a couple times. So I kind of like that. And, and I just felt like Eddie was actually trying here. Now keep in mind, in this last recent run of Eddie, it's been hot and cold. You know, it's been hot and cold during uh, Eddie's no recent run, his last run. Let's be fun. This is, I think, this is his last run in Hollywood. Um, with the Dolomite movie, I thought he was fantastic as a as a Rudy Ray Moore. Coming to America, coming to number two America, didn't like it. Didn't like it. Uh, then he had the the You People film with him. And uh, Jonah Hill, I was eh on it. I think Eddie could have been funnier in the film. Um, but I can say out of this recent run Eddie's been on, this is the best Eddie performance. This is the best Eddie performance because you could tell he's having fun. You could tell he, he's enjoying playing this character again. And you can see it through the screen. And once you see that Eddie's having fun, then we're going to have fun with it. And it felt like, like I would envision a, a young 22-year-old Axel, I could see him growing to be this Axel and that's in part four. Now, and I'll say this, if this movie, Beverly Hills Cop, Axel F, Beverly Hills Cop 4, if this was the third film that came out 30 years ago, it would have been a hit. It would have absolutely been a hit. I guarantee it would have been a hit. It would have been a big hit in the box office. Okay, so of course, you know, you just you just de-age everybody. You just de-age, you know, you just de-age everybody. You actually bring Taggart back this time. And of course, you have to switch some things around with the daughter and all that stuff. But if you just, you put 1993 Eddie, 1993 Judge Reinhold, 1993 um, uh, John Ashton, 1993 Kevin Bacon, and you put them in this film, and you, you take this film, you drop it in 1993, then 1993, then this would have been a big hit. I guarantee it because this movie was everything that Beverly Hills Cop movie should be. At this point, it's what I wanted, and I what I love the fact that they didn't shy away from it. They did not, the first thing you see is Eddie Murphy driving through Detroit, and you hear the heat is on, heat is on. But that's the first thing you hear. You know, and, and they play the Axel F theme. They don't shy away from that. When Eddie Murphy's in the snowplow, you shake down, you bust that. Like, they don't give a fuck. They acknowledge it. They embrace it. And you know what? I was cool with it. I was absolutely cool with it. They It knows what it was. It knows what the fans want. They know what they want to see. And I was okay with that. Like, was it predictable? Yes. But that's okay. Like, the moment you see Kevin Bacon on screen, you know he's the villain. Hell, as soon as he was announced he was going to be in the movie, you knew he was going to be the villain. And speaking of Kevin Bacon, I thought Kevin Bacon was great. I thought he was great in this film. Now, I kind of wish we had a little bit more scenes with him um, because I, I guess, spoiler alert, I guess, uh, there was a moment where Kevin, Kevin Bray gets coked up where he's on cocaine and he's high on cocaine in like the last, like his last like 15 minutes of the film. 
I kind of would like to see the coked up Kevin Bacon all throughout the movie. It just sounds so fucking entertaining. I thought Kevin Bacon was great in the film as the villain. Uh, I thought Eddie Murphy was on his A game. He was on his A game here. You know that 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 charm, that you know that charisma, that Axel Foley uh, quick wit edge to him was back. Now, granted, you know. You know, of course, it's 2024, and you know Axel can't, you know, can't say the things that he was saying back and then. But I liked that they know that Axel has matured. This is the maturity that Eddie Murphy was talking about for Beverly Hills Cop Three of how Axel should be. But here's the thing, though: the difference between that is, yes, Axel is more mature. Here, but he was still Axel, regardless. Beverly Hills Cop 3, and he didn't want to act like Axel at all. Period. That's not the case here. He's still very much Axel Foley, but just older. And I loved it. I was I I compare watching this film to it's like when you see an old rock band or an old, you know, RB group have one last reunion concert right you go to the concert and you watch them perform the hits that's what you want to see is the hits right you don't really care about the new songs you just want to see them like my favorite group music group is new edition right who's currently uh, doing their vegas residency when i go up to see when i go to see a new edition concert i want to see them do if it is a love I want to see them do Cool It Now. I want to see them do Candy Girl. And you know what? Even though they're older, they can still hit the moves. They can still sing the songs. Not Maybe not as crisp and clean and as great as they did back in 1983, but it's still good enough. It's still good enough to make you want to buy a ticket and see them at the show. That's what this reminds me of. Yes, Eddie's a little older, but it's still good. Yes, Taggart and Rosewood, they're older. All three of them are older, but it's still good. Which, by the way, that was maybe the one little nitpick I may have about this film. We didn't get enough screen time with Taggart and Rosewood and uh, Axel uh, together. But damn it, when we do get them together, it feels like 1983 all over again. When, when, because because Billy is a huge part of the plot of this film, and he's not really in it that much. Um, and, and John actually, go God bless him. He's got to be like in the 70s. And and it, but 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 when when those three are together, oh my gosh, like it it feels like 1983 all over again. You you so much you even notice Eddie's energy like picks up when he's with those th- when he's with those two. Like I noticed the, the 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 change of energy that Eddie had when he was with those two at the very end. Spoiler alert! But it's what it could be. Now I don't expect this to you know, begin another, uh, begin a trilogy. Now, apparently there's already talks with Eddie and Netflix about doing a fifth film. Okay, fine. But I will say this, if this was it, if this is it, I'll be okay with it. I will be fine with it. Eddie and the crew did not embarrass themselves. I could tell the writer and director treated the movie with absolute respect. And if you're an older fan, or if you're someone that grew up watching Beverly Hills Cop films, I think you would walk away satisfied with this. I think you would walk away satisfied with what they did here. Could could there be some nitpicks I could point out? Absolutely. I can say one right now. I was not the biggest fan of the daughter, the um, the daughter storyline. That I think the Taylor Page. I think that's where her name is. Uh, she was the girl that was in the Kendrick Lamar. Um, a we cry together song. Um, I was not the biggest fan of her. I quite honestly didn't really care 
about their story. Um, I, 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 I'm so I just didn't, I didn't really find myself caring that much. Um, I thought Joseph Gordon Levitt was fine in this film. I thought him and Eddie had some, actually had some pretty good chemistry. Like I could see Joseph Gordon Levitt coming back. Um, if they ever do a fifth film, he could kind of be like the new Billy. I could kind of say, um, yeah, I, I, I actually enjoyed Joseph Gordon Levitt in this film, like a lot. You know, cause the back forwards with him and Eddie, I thought was really, really good. Um, and yeah, I, I, I enjoyed the film. I had a good time. I thought they did a great job. Great job with this film. And you and again, you gotta you know, lower your expectations. Once again, Axel is 63 years old. Okay. If you are younger, if you're probably like someone into like maybe like in their teens and their early 20s, probably not gonna give a fuck about this film. You're not gonna care. Uh, this is more for the people that lived during that era or at least grew up on that era to at least know Eddie Murphy, Beverly Hills Cop. Because um, the action that was there, I thought the action was good. You know, you know, like the action in Beverly Hills Cop film, it's never really about the action when it comes to Beverly Hills Cop. It's never really been about that. It's more so of, see, of, of Axel seeing Axel Lee Seeing Axel Foley would be a smart ass and a wise ass. That's really what it's all about at the end of the day. And we get it. I thought the action was solid for the most part. I thought the story was solid for the most part. Um, Eddie is on his A game. Um, who would have liked to have seen the trio together more. But when we did for that final scene, like it, it felt like 1983 all over again. Um the, the nostalgia that it hits, you know, like I got what I wanted out of it. I did. I got what I wanted out of it. And I, no complaints, no complaints. Um, but yeah, those are my thoughts on Beverly Hills Cop 4 or Beverly Hills Cop Axe Love, however you want to call the title. And um, like I said, I enjoyed it. You can watch it on Netflix. And um, let me know your guys' thoughts. How do you guys feel about the film? Please hit that like and subscribe button. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and get on out of here. And everyone have yourselves a good night. And I am out. Peace.